Welcome to the anatomical model of your eye. This model has additional features of the lacrimal gland and the eyelid that most other models lack. Let's begin with the eyelid. The superior eyelid is referred to as the superior tarsus. The lower eyelid is referred to as the inferior tarsus. The upper eyelid is controlled by a muscle called the levator palpebrae superioris. This functions to open the eyes. Next, let's go through the parts of the lacrimal apparatus. This entire structure in brown is the lacrimal gland. This portion of the lacrimal gland is known as the palpebral part of the lacrimal gland, whereas the remaining portion is considered the orbital part of the lacrimal gland. The lacrimal gland has ducts located here in green. The lacrimal gland secretes fluid for the eye, keeping the eye moist, protecting it from desiccation and from unwanted particles entering the eye. Tears are drained from the surface of the eye through the structure at 11C, the lacrimal caruncle. From the primal caruncle, tears will flow through the superior canuliculus and inferior canuliculus. The superior and inferior canuliculi are ducts that will drain into the lacus lacrimalis, located in this model at number 11. From there, the fluid will collect into the lacrimal sac located at number 10 in this model. Here at 12, we have the lacrimal papilla, or the lacrimal punctum. Attached to the upper and lower eyelids are two ligaments. Here at number 4, we have the medial palpebral ligament that sits on the medial side towards the nose. On the lateral side, away from the nose, we have the lateral palpebral ligament. Let's remove our eyelid and the lacrimal apparatus to reveal more structures underneath. The eye itself has six extraocular muscles. We have the superior rectus, the inferior rectus, the medial rectus, and the lateral rectus. In addition to these four muscles, we have two oblique muscles. One is the superior oblique, located on the superior portion of the eye that points towards the medial side, whereas the inferior oblique lies here inferiorly and points laterally. The superior rectus allows the eye to look upwards. The medial rectus allows each eye to look at the nose. The inferior rectus allows the eyeball to gaze downward, and the lateral rectus allows each eye to glance away from the nose. Remember in this model, the medial side is going to be the side with more bone. The outermost layer of the eye is sometimes referred to as the fibrous layer of the eyeball. The fibrous layer of the eyeball has two main components. The first component is the clear cornea that makes the outermost portion of the anterior eye. The other portion of the fibrous layer of the eyeball is the white sclera. The sclera is the white portion of the eyes, and as you can see in the model, the sclera continues across the eye globe. Some of the other structures that we can see is the pupil, which is a hole in the iris, and the colored portion of the eye, which is the iris. Moving this around, we can also see the optic nerve and more of the inferior rectus and inferior oblique, the lateral rectus and superior rectus. Looking at the medial view, we can see the medial rectus, the superior oblique, and the superior rectus, and also the optic nerve again, and a portion of the inferior rectus too. The middle layer of the eye is referred to as the vascular layer of the eye. Let's remove the vascular layer of our eye. In this model, all of the brown coloring indicates the choroid or the choroid coat. The choroid coat 
is known as the vascular layer of the eyeball. The choroid coat is complete with ciliary nerves shown in yellow. The choroid also contains the ciliary arteries in red and the massive complex of the vorticose veins seen here in blue. The vorticose veins is sometimes referred to as the vortex veins. In this view, we can also see part of the optic nerve. I'm able to see the iris, and I can see the hole in the iris, which is the pupil. Here at four, we have the ciliary muscles. Now that we're done with our vascular layer, let's go one more layer deep. At this point, we are considered to be at the inner layer of the eyeball. In the much larger posterior chamber shown here, we have the vitreous humor. In this model, the vitreous humor is shown as this clear ball. Another rather obvious structure is the lens. Here is the lens. Notice that the lens is biconvex. The shape of the lens is controlled by the ciliary muscles. This structure is called the ciliary body and houses the ciliary muscles. As we get closer to the lens, we can see the ligaments that connect to the lens in an area called the corona ciliaris, the corona ciliaris. Here, we can also see a cross section of the optic nerve. The wall of the eye has three layers. The outermost layer is the sclera in white. The middle layer is the choroid, and the innermost layer of the eye is the retina. The retina, the color orange, on the inner layer of the eyeball. The retina contains blood vessels, which are the retinal arterioles in red, and the retinal venules in blue. The retina contains rods and cones that are photoreceptors that are going to sense light and send signals to the brain. The centermost portion of our vision is located at this structure denoted as number 13 in this model. This region of the retina is called the macula. The centermost portion of the macula is called the fovea or fovea centralis. The fovea centralis will have the highest concentration of cones in the retina. Cones are responsible for perceiving color. We have red, green, and blue photoreceptors, and all of the colors of the rainbow are perceived through the differential activations of these three color cones. As we get more peripheral in our vision, rods become more common and cones less common. Our peripheral vision is much better at sensing movement due to the activation of rods in low light situations and being able to see contrast like movement fairly easily in the peripheral vision. There are several layers of cells within the retina. The last layer of cells in the retina is the ganglion cell layer. The axons of the ganglion cell layer come together and make a U-turn to exit the eye in the form of the optic nerve. The point at which the optic nerve leaves the eye is called the optic disc. The optic disc does not have any photoreceptors at all. For this reason, this is sometimes referred to as the blind spot. That's everything you need to know about the eye.